For the back bend helper bone, for some reason I decided to use, instead of the max value, I let it to zero, but then I used the minimum value and put it as a negative number. Of course, all this also has to do with the positioning, the orientation of the bone on edit mold, right? So, I've decided to make them that way, but uh, maybe it's not the, the optimal way, the simplest way. But it works, that's what matters. And here for this one, so here you see Z, the rotation is for the target, it's Z. And then I took negative uh, 45 degrees, something like that, I guess. And then uh, 135 degrees, that would be something like that, I guess. This is a bit arbitrary. That, uh, and then the maximum well, that's a lot, right? The, then the maximum, it goes, yes, it had to go a lot because otherwise there, ha, there would happen some really bad deformations there. So that's why this is very elevated number. Then the Y axis, yes, is this distance doesn't move a lot. Yeah, it's, it could. So you see, there is pretty simple. It's just not so easy to to understand and to get used to that. But then, uh, the mo one of the most important things in this rig is the fact that uh, the transformation bone constraint is only affecting the helper bones on a certain scope of rotation. Otherwise, those bones will try to to make inverse transformations as the live bone rotates on the other direction. And that would be very problematic to set up a rig. And so this is why this limitation here is fundamental to this. And there are other ways to achieve that, but for me this was the, the solution with uh, transformation bone constraint. And for corrective shape keys, this would be the same analysis because we can have a corrective shape key that would affect only the frontal bending of the leg, then we make another correct shape key for the back bending and side bending. So three shape keys, one for each uh, uh, component of rotation of the type bone. So this is this kind of analytical uh, approach is what we need for a uh, for the deformation of a complex joint so check this this is the back bone bend back i've made it receive changes from both the negative and the positive rotations from the type bone yeah this is not causing so terrible trouble but as we go here I'm doing the equivalent for both bent front helper bones. Yeah, so you see, it's not so terrible, but the problem is that now those bones are moving all the time. That could work too, yes. But it makes things more complicated, right? You have to deal with the deformations coming from all the ways, all the time. Remember, th these are not corrective shape keys that we have direct input into the, the mesh deformations. No, this is intuitive. Uh, it's not exact work here. Very difficult to be exact with this. We are just more or less smoothing out the deformations. Okay, folks, so I've decided to make this didactic example so that we can better appreciate how this transformation bone constraint works in general. So here I'm just swapping the helper bone that has different min and max values and of course this you can play back again if you want to compare of course what you should be looking for here is the min and max values for the z-axis of the helper bone so for example this selected one helper bone it has a minimum value of zero just like here and a maximum value smaller than zero which is negative 10 here Okay, so, and these lines that I've draw here, hold on, they are the root position for 
the bone on edit mode. Of course you can play back this video as much as you want, but I'm just swapping here. I'm always using 0, 10 or negative 10 for the values. So there's no mistake here. So I'm swapping this so you can just compare if you want again. So one thing that is absolutely fundamental to notice here is that if we take for example this model and this model we'll see that as the thigh bone rotates positively it goes up the helper bone also goes up and vice versa right it goes down when the legs rotates goes down like rotates negatively so this is aligned let's say like that but in the other cases in this model in this model it's the inverse that is happening and maybe we need this for some helper bones in our rig and maybe we need this for other helper bones in our rig so uh, this is not right of wrong or wrong it's just different uh, setups but how do you achieve this actually if you check here what's happening is that the maximum value is a positive number is 10 and the minimum is 0 so here and while here is it's like things are in order right maximum equal 0 and minimum is negative is a negative number negative 10 so nothing is being inversed here right while on the other case here as you can see don't even need to check here but the maximum is a negative number so this is bizarre right and right here the minimum is a positive number which is also bizarre so this causes the inversion of motion another thing that is very interesting to notice is that if you check here on animation certain helper bones will eventually reach the mark of the of their root position while others such as these two will not but this is not happening because of this cope of local z-axis transformations even though this affects yes but this is happening mainly because of the keyframe animation where that i've made here in which the type bone never gets a 180 degrees positive rotation actually the higher angle that this type reaches might be something around 100 35 120 i know it's 100 it's about 120 already so if i change it here so that you see that now i've reduced the scope between 0 and 120 degrees for the type bone rotation and that makes that this other scope of motion of local transformation for the this helper bone now is completely being appreciated so it goes from the root which should be the max zero and it reaches to the mean which should be 10 meters even though yes 10 meters here will be from here to from the root to there that's it that's exactly what's happening folks and so lastly in this thing i still use this example because this is a good one now that it has a better scope in here map from is that if i change now let's do a composed thing here if i change the maximum to let's say a negative number let's see what will happen I'll, I'll put it negative 10 as well so it, it will not ne negate the minimum the minimum is still reaching that spot right but the, now the maximum is reaching a local negative which should be somewhere like here and that's it and so did you see how fast this bone moved right now so because I have augmented the scope and so you see the possibilities I guess so there are a lot of things to be wary about when making the use of 
transformation bond constraint but it's pretty cool right to be able to use this stuff properly okay folks so let's start this at once let me enable screencast edit mode so uh, I'll start adding the the helper bones I just need I don't want to copy those duplicate those bones because then they will give me um, wave painting data which I don't want I have to delete them after so what I want is just to get the cursor to world origin then I'll add some bones and this time I'll this will be one helper bone I'll place it like here and I'll orient this time all the helper bones in the same direction it they will be like in world direction so if I'm not wrong if I have the gizmo here let's see navigate yes the y axis is here this is the negative y so yeah that's it so this is the this is uh, what we need so I'll get this bone here then another bone right here and another one to the side the side um, bone the side for side bending so let's rename all that so this is front bend left back bend and side bend yeah those names uh, probably would be better to have bend back bend side bend front would be better but uh, or helper whatever but that's good enough for the tutorial so now let's do the parenting I'm still not making the other one because maybe who knows maybe it's not that necessary probably it will be let's push this to this to this way a little up here okay now I think I do not need to see those ones I'll just hide everything except the type bone then we need to address wave painting maybe yes let's see wave painting so this one uh, probably will need some wave painting around here not a lot just um, yeah something like that maybe uh, maybe a lot here yes okay because this is the danger zone remember this is the area that will suffer a lot from the type bone x rotation deformation uh, x rotation then here uh, the back bending probably will require the gluteus muscles and flesh to be uh, more uh, strong here the waves this probably should do should do then for the side as I remember here is something also that it's not so much important here it's more around here apparently that requires more wave I'm not sure but uh, I think yes it's about here maybe a little here too maybe there's too much here but uh, it's better to address this later also so this I'm just making to get it uh, started oh yes and also let's make just some smoothing of this wave paint so I select all this and uh, well maybe it will have to be one by one so smooth then the adjust last operation panel let's smooth like that here also smooth and this also smooth yeah that buys me some time 